and Beatty, Angular Visual Harness uh, joint work with Weiyang, Animesh, Jiding, and Shumali and Anima. Let's start from some motivating examples to discuss the gap between human visual perception and CNN. From the left side images, we can observe images that are easy for humans to recognize but hard for CNNs. These images have relatively rich context, but the salient part is still the object of interest. Right hand side images are hard to recognize for humans, but easy for CNNs. These images have more textures and less objects. As we'll see in the next slide, the human selection frequency is the proportion of humans who identify the true labels. The goal of our research here is to quantitatively measure the human visual harness and bridge the gap between human visual system and CNNs. An inspiring related work is do ImageNet classifiers generalize to ImageNet? Besides curating a new ImageNet test set, the author also provides human selection frequency information for all testing images. On the left, it shows that the interface they use to get such proportion of correct human labeling information with 50 labelers on MTurk. The plot on the right shows authors claim that there's correlation between easy and hard examples for human and the CNS across different models. Typically, in CN-based visual recognition, we use softmax function and cross-entropy loss as the objectives. Specifically, we define the model confidence as the softmax output of the logics. More interestingly, we decompose the inner product between the weights of the classifiers and the deep learned feature embeddings of inputs into respective L2 norm and the cosine of angles between them. We argue that the angle plays a much more important role in determining an image visual harness in this work. Another previous work by our collaborator visualizes the feature on MNIST by setting the output feature embedded dimension as two. The visualization shows that deep learned feature embeddings are naturally decoupled with angle and norm, and the angle stands for the semantic difference, while higher norm stands for higher confidence. Although the previous work have touched the insights of the implicit correlation between human visual hardness and some characteristics of CNN, they don't quantitatively measure the correlation. We first take a look at the relation between model confidence and human selection frequency among all testing examples of ImageNet test sets. Our result in the color map show that the model confidence is not aligned with human selection frequency verifying the known gap between human visual system and CNN. Similarly, we also found that L2 norm of the feature embedding also do not strongly correlate with human selection frequency. Naturally, the potential remaining factor that may correlate with human selection frequency is the angle between the embedding and weight vectors. Before getting into that, we first define the metric angular visual hardness, aka AVH, based on the angular information. Specifically, given a sample X and its label Y, its AVS is defined by the angle between its feature embeddings and target class weights, normalized by the sum of the angles between the feature embedding and all class weights. The empirical result shows that AVH is strongly correlated with human selection frequency. Compared to the model confidence, AVH can better represent human visual hardness in CNNs. After discovering such strong correlation, a natural question arises. What role does AVH play during the training process? Note that in the subsequent experiments, we trained the popular CM models from scratch 
a locked AVH L2 norm of the embedding and model accuracy of texting samples with respect to training epochs of ImageNet. As seen in the top three plots, AVH hits a plateau very early, even when the accuracy or loss is still improving, as shown in the bottom plots. AVH is optimized only at the very beginning of neural network training pro process. Recall that during inference, in respective of L2 norm of embeddings, the angle play a major role in determining the, in predicting the classes. Therefore, the plus indicates that current learning objective function does not directly optimize AVH as expected. By looking at the end ending epoch of the plots, we can see that the AVH is an indicator of model's generalization ability as well. Because we observe that across different models, the better performing ones will have lower AVH scores. For example, both VGG19 and ResNet50 are much better than AlexNet in terms of the final AVH score, while VGG19 is slightly worse than ResNet50, which also matches this model's empirical performance on tasks that require good generalization, such as object detection and segmentation. On the contrary, the norms of feature embedding keeps increasing during training. However, because the top predicted class does not depend on the embedding norm, they do not reflect the prediction results. Increasing the norm is still able to minimize the loss value during training as long as the prediction result is correct. So we argue that the norm is only helping with the optimization process, but does not directly correlate with model generalization. Diving deeper, we split the test set into five levels of, of human visual hardness. The blue ones correspond to the most hard examples for human, and the purple lines correspond to the easy ones. The AVH gaps between different human selection frequencies are very consistent across all the models during the whole training process. This further corroborates that AVH is a more generalizable proxy to human visual hardness. In contrast, the norm correlation with human selection frequency is not consistent. We can see that in ResNet 50 on the right, the norm of samples with different human selection frequency converge to the same value in the end of the training. So it cannot serve as a human visual hardness indicator. Based on the observations and insights, we conjecture the training dynamics of CNN has two phases. First one is at the beginning of the training, the SOHOMAX cross entropy loss will first optimize the angles among different classes while the norm will fluctuate and increase very slowly. We argue that this is because changing the norm will not decrease the loss when the angles are not separated enough for correct classification. As a result, the angles get optimized first. The second phase is as the training continues, the angles becomes more stable and change very slowly while the norm increases rapidly. On the other hand, for easy examples, it's because the angles get decreased enough for correct classification, the softmax cross entropy loss can be well minimized by purely increasing the norm. On the other hand, for hard examples, the platter is caused by the inability to decrease the angle in order to correctly classify examples, and thereby it also unable to increase the norms otherwise hurting the loss. This validates the previous claim on good generalization need to focus on hard examples ultimately. We also briefly talk about a special case the adversarial example. We know that a given image and its noisy adversarial example share the same human visual hardness, but they're very different 
for CM models. So it is naturally a special case for AVH as well. AVH only holds for on the harness of natural images, but we're still very curious to know how AVH changes during the adversarial attack process. The purple line is the trajectory of an adversarial example. We gradually increased the attack strength of this particular sample. We found that it first shrinks towards the region and then changes angle and shift to another class. While it's changing its angle, its AVI score will change as well. Very interestingly, the trajectory shows that AVH is actually a robust hardness indicator since it takes a large attack strength in order to change AVH than the norm. For our future work, we'll make use of AVH in many potential applications like deep metric learning, fairness in machine learning, knowledge transfer, or curriculum learning. Besides, Designing a better loss function than softmax cross entropy with AVH is still an open problem. Thank you for attending the talk and welcome to stop by our poster for further details and insights. Thank you very much for a very interesting uh, talk. So I, I would like to ask a question from the perspective of uh, face recognition uh, research. So first observation is that in face recognition, the norm of the embedding is very much related to the certainty of, the, of uh, actually recognizing the person. So not related to human uh, hardness, but to the certainty of actually um, recognizing the correct person. So this is one question. And the second one is, did you consider losses such as spherical losses and other types of losses that are directly related to this uh, angle between the representation and the uh, embedding? Thanks. Uh, so the first question um, is, um, So the norm of the embedding is a good indicator uh, of the, uncertain, the certainty or the confidence of the model. Um, and while the, it is, uh, is not related to the human visual harness, um, is that the question? Yes, so for some of the previous work, uh, there are observations on, on the, for the intra-class, uh, the norm is kind of like an indicator of how confident this model is to those examples, but it's totally irrelevant to the human visual harness as we shown in the correlation plot. That's the first question. Uh, and the second one, uh, is that about the focal loss? Spherical, yes, so this, um, actually the, one of the collaborator is the author of the spherical network. Uh, so this is very related to that. And this is like an insight and explanation or the motivation of why spherical network works. So, thanks. <laughs> 